The African Continental Free Trade Area AFCFTA, must not be allowed to fall by the wayside, according to experts, after its launch was postponed by the coronavirus pandemic. The AFCFTA, which was due to be implemented on July 1, will be the largest free trade area in the world, uniting one. 3 billion people in a $3.4 trillion economic bloc, and came after protracted negotiations between the leaders of 54 African nations. However, it was postponed in late April, with AFCFTA Secretary General Wamkele Mean telling Reuters it was the responsible thing to do to avoid distracting leaders during the pandemic, adding that he was confident the deal will go through eventually. The continent's key trading partners, such as China, and now to a greater extent Europe and the US, have been blighted by the pandemic, while Africa has for the most part managed to avoid an exponential spread of COVID-19. Given the impact of the outbreak on Africa's traditional intercontinental trade routes, intra-Africa trade will be key to getting the region's nations back up and running, according to Thomas Bergen, Nairobi-based treasury manager for AZA, Africa's largest non-bank currency broker. We need to see a situation where your cargo isn't returned at the port because you don't belong to a certain economic bloc, Bergen said in a recent webinar. Here in Kenya, we killed our textile industry because we import second-hand clothes from China and everywhere else. Now with the closure of borders, we cannot live without these products that we have become used to importing. Bergen noted the manufacturing of protective masks in Kenya and Nigeria as an example of the opportunities available for African nations to produce their own products and trade within the continent. Executive Director of the International Trade Center, Dorothy Tembo, told CNBC Africa that despite the risks to the AFCFTA's implementation, African leaders had a unique opportunity to spur greater collaboration if specific policies were fast-tracked. This is a time for Africa to rethink and reposition itself. Part of what we are seeing is that there is a shift in the demand in the context of the different value chains that African companies and businesses are involved in, Tembo said. Like Bergen, she noted the shift in demand from textiles and garments to masks and health-related products, and suggested that other opportunities will also arise. It is a dark moment for Africa in terms of the public health impact, but it is also one that demands that on the economic side, we are not losing truck on the efforts that have been made, particularly with respect to the continental free trade area," Tembo added. Jeff Gable, chief economist at African banking group ABSA, told CNBC that Africa should be applauded and supported for moving towards collaboration, while the rest of the world moves towards isolationism.